We love the idea of kids growing up with or around dogs, but what seems like a match made in heaven can become a source of stress and anxiety. I receive a lot of questions in my classes about the best way to make interactions between kids and dogs as positive as possible. Challenges occur when dogs are nervous or hyperactive with kids, and when kids haven't learned how to interact in a calm and respectful manner with dogs. Why is this important? There are 4.5 million dog bites reported every year in the United States, and approximately half of those reported bites are directed at children. The majority of dog bites occur in a home with a dog that belongs to family or friends. Toddlers in particular can be unpredictable with dogs. They might grab lips, ears, hair, or tails. They may try to lay on top of a dog, take the dog's toy, or chase nervous dogs into small, confined spaces. All of these interactions can test the tolerance of the most patient dogs. The goal is to set the stage for healthy, predictable interactions between kids and dogs at different stages of child development. Let's look at a few different ways that we can make that happen. Teach your kids to understand dog body language. Dogs may not speak the same language we do, but they are constantly talking to us through body language and behavior. Here's a simple way to show your kids how to speak dog. Sit down on the ground with a variety of food options. Choose at least two low value food options and two high value food items, and maybe one or two that you're not sure about. Our dog Beatrix doesn't particularly enjoy leafy greens or blueberries, but she loves meaty foods and cheese. Carrots and bananas are hit or miss. In this exercise, you're going to invite your dog to approach and offer a piece of food. Before you begin, ask yourself this question. What would it look like if your dog said, yes, please, or no, thank you? If your dog is saying, yes, please, their ears will likely perk forward, their eyes will be bright with happy anticipation, and they will quickly take the food with little to no hesitation. If your dog is saying, no, thank you, they might look or move away. They might refuse the food or they might take the food politely and then quietly spit it out. You can try the same experiment with different types of toys. If your dog is saying, yes, please, to a toy, you will notice their ears go forward, their eyes will be bright, and they will offer an enthusiastic response when you offer the toy. If your dog is saying, no, thank you, to a toy, they are likely to draw their ears back, look away, or yawn. Again, they might take a toy politely, but drop the toy with little or no enthusiasm for playing. He said, no, thank you. Talk to your kids about what your dog is trying to tell you through their behavior and body language. The same body language applies to petting. Dog bites can happen when we decide to pet a dog but ignore their body language. Dogs are more likely to bite when they're not feeling well, physically or emotionally. If a dog is experiencing an upset stomach, an undiagnosed ear infection, or if they are feeling stressed or nervous with noise or activity in the environment, any dog can bite. To reduce the risk of dog bites and to promote healthy relationships between kids and dogs, it's important to teach kids to read, recognize, and respect what your dog is trying to communicate. Before we jump into the next exercise, let's start off with some simple facts. One, not all dogs want to be pet. Two, most dogs do not like to be pet on top of their head. Three, respect your dog's individual preferences. There's no benefit to forcing unwanted attention. Four, your dog's preferences when it comes to petting may change depending on the time, place, and person. We're the same. Sometimes we want a hug and sometimes we don't. We might value a hug from a trusted friend but feel uncomfortable being hugged by a stranger. And sometimes we just want space. Dogs are like that too. If a dog says no thank you to petting, don't take it personally. If you have a dog that enjoys petting and seems comfortable with your kids, try this next exercise. You can also take a mental note of this exercise and apply these concepts the next time you or your kids meet a social dog at a family member or friend's house. 
Sit down with your kids and invite your dog to approach. If your dog approaches, you can gently pet their shoulder or beneath their ear. Stop regularly and see what your dog says. If your dog steps forward or nudges your hand, they're most likely saying, yes, more petting please. If at any point your dog backs away, licks their lips, pulls their ears back, or tucks their tail, these are nervous behaviors. Teach your kids that this is your dog's way of saying no thank you. The same would hold true if they showed any hesitation or reluctance to approach in the first place. It's okay for your dog to opt out. This is your cue to move on to a new activity. In fact, this is a great opportunity to explore shared activities that can help kids and dogs develop stronger bonds and establish a solid platform for two-way communication and trust. Reading to your dog. Set up a reading space where you can sit with your kids and read stories to your dog. Older kids can practice their reading skills by reading familiar books. This is a great calming activity for young or excitable dogs and it's a great trust building exercise for nervous dogs. Encouraging this activity can also help kids develop a more positive attitude towards reading. In the end, it's a win-win for everyone. Search games. Have your dog wait on a training mat or platform while your kid hides a high value piece of food. It's important to pick something that your dog loves. Once the item is hidden, you can have your kid walk back to your dog and say, find it. Find it. Then encourage your dog to find the hidden item. You can play a similar game with one of your dog's favorite toys. Beatrix loves search games that involve her blue dumbbell. If your dog doesn't have a solid weight or stay, you can keep your dog on a harness and leash instead. Go find it! Start with easy finds and gradually build up in level of difficulty as your dog shows you they understand the game. Next, I want to show you different games that are well suited to different age groups. A four-year-old will need games with simple rule structures that focus on easy to understand concepts. As kids grow, they will be able to practice games with multiple steps and advancing mechanical skills. You might even find that these games will improve your dog's ability to walk on a loose leash or teach your dog to be more reliable at coming when called. I'm a big fan of fun training games with real world carryover. But before we go any further, I do want to take a minute to acknowledge that these videos are brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you for your support. My goal with this channel is to demonstrate the power of positive reinforcement in behavioral training. Behavioral training for anxiety, reactivity, hyperactivity, or aggression is most effective when we establish training that fosters a calm connection and focuses on systematically guiding dogs through situations that may otherwise generate stress or over arousal. These training videos are made possible with your contributions, so thank you. If you enjoy these videos and want to ensure more videos are produced, you can contribute on Ko-fi. To contribute, you can scan this QR code with the camera app on your smartphone or click on the link in the description. In addition to these videos, I also teach online classes that are specifically designed for dogs that exhibit anxious, hyperactive, reactive, or aggressive behavior. The training exercises taught in these classes improve a dog's ability to cope with stressful or overstimulating events, like guests entering your home or seeing other dogs on leash. And they teach owners the best way to guide their dog through the behavior modification process. If you are interested in learning more, you can go to the link in the description. I would love to have you in class. Now, back to our video. Positive training. Kids love the idea of training with dogs, and it's easy to understand why. As one of my kids once said, it's like we speak the same language. And this truly is the best part of training. The more you do, the closer you become especially if you are implementing positive reinforcement-based methods. That being said, it's important that adults spend the time training with dogs first, 
Once the training is well rehearsed, it can then be generalized with kids with a much higher level of success. One of the biggest challenges when it comes to teaching kids how to train with a dog is that they are quick and erratic in their movements. This is especially pronounced if kids are nervous about having a dog take food from their hand. It's important to respect each individual's comfort level and find an exercise that meets everyone's needs and abilities. Young kids ages three to five will love this training game. I call it hopping lily pads. Show your little one how to deliver treats one at a time on a lily pad. These are actually called poly spots and they are commonly used for kids and athletic programs. Have your kid deliver three to five treats at each poly spot, then call out a new color and have your kid move to the next spot. The reason this game is so helpful is because it teaches kids to invite dogs to approach them instead of advancing on the dog's space. Interactions should always be posed as an invitation, never forced. Delivering treats to a spot will also promote confidence in kids that might be nervous about delivering treats directly to a dog's mouth. This is also a great idea for dogs that might be uncertain or grabby when taking treats. The poly spots create a physical target that will make the rules of the training easier to understand. A parent or guardian should actively supervise these interactions so that they can offer guidance as necessary. Peter, come. Older or more confident kids ages six and above may do better with moving exercises. Set the poly spots in a line about two to three feet from a fence line or a wall. The poly spots should be spaced out at four foot intervals. Your kid can walk from poly spot to poly spot stopping at each one. Once your kid stops, your dog will likely stop also. Have your kid deliver food to your dog when they stop. It doesn't matter if your dog is standing or sitting as long as your dog has four paws on the ground. This exercise encourages calm, indirect body language and will improve trust and communication between dogs and kids. You may also find that this exercise can carry over to a better connection and synchronization of movement when out for walks or on a hike. Another fun game is to show your dog a favorite treat and then hide. Pluto, come! This is a variation of the search game we talked about earlier. Be careful not to do this with kids that are nervous with dogs or dogs that are nervous with kids. Some kids might find it scary to have a dog dashing in their direction. And dogs might become scared if kids unexpectedly jump out from a hiding spot. Relaxation stations. Toddlers and young children should be actively supervised when they interact. Make sure that your dog has access to safe spaces where they can relax without the constant worry of kids interrupting their naps or forcing unwanted petting. Sit down and talk to your kids about what it means to give a dog space when napping or resting. Baby gates can provide peace of mind when you are on a phone call, preparing food, or if you are unable to actively supervise for any reason. There are 4.5 million dog bites reported in the United States every year. Half of those bites are directed at kids. Those bites are predictable and preventable. We can make this better. So if you find the information in this video helpful, please share it. Teach your kids to be more aware of what your dog is telling them through body language and behavior, and encourage others to do the same. Harmonious interactions between kids and dogs is all about planting seeds of respect and kindness early on. It takes time, patience, and understanding, but there is nothing more beautiful than watching those relationships flourish. If you like this video and you want to learn more about positive and effective methods to address behavioral issues in dogs, check out these playlists. These playlists provide insights into behavior modification training for dogs that exhibit anxious, reactive, hyperactive, or aggressive behavior. Thanks for watching.